Canella. I'm delighted to be one of Canella's medical advisors and I'm going to be giving a few snippets of information along the way. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about arginine. Arginine is an amino acid. It's an amino acid that is called a semi-essential amino acid. This is because we can make it and as adults we do. Children, however, can't make enough, so we have to eat it. An essential amino acid is one that has to be eaten, a non-essential one that we make abundance of, and this falls in the, in the middle. It's extremely important, so many different angles to talk about, and I'm going to try and summarise it here. In humans, it's one of the most metabolically versatile amino acids and serves as a precursor, a starting point, a building block, if you will, for several different uh, metabolic uh, compounds and pathways. But the most important one is nitric oxide. Arginine has many functions, but its most important, probably, is its formation of nitric oxide. NO, as we call it, is so important that it's vital to our existence. Without NO, without arginine, we are going to struggle. The inner lining of arteries, called the endothelium, produce NO and do so predominantly from arginine. We can make it from nitrates and nitrites, but that's a fraction of what we can make. The importance of NO is to keep the arteries flexible. It causes dilation and increases permeability, allowing the bounciness to persist. Without it, the arteries stiffen. The more flexible the arteries are, the more blood flows through. The more permeable, the more immune cells can get out, the more waste product can get back in, the more oxygen that can get out, and the interchange is vital for our well-being. Arginine can be used as a building block for proteins and therefore is involved in other metabolic processes and the structure of certain parts of cells. NO is also found made in platelets. Platelets are specialised red blood cells that travel around the body. They are part of our clotting system and our repair system and without them we would be in big trouble. We also now know that nitric oxide and its bioavailability is vital for its role in hypertension and for improving vascular injury. So if something comes along and damages a blood vessel, nitric oxide actually helps its repair. So having established that arginine converts to NO, nitric oxide, and through that it creates a lot of benefits to a lot of different parts of a lot of different cells, we can now transfer that to how it actually helps health. By keeping arteries flexible, permeable, we're of course going to have an effect on hypertension. We're going to have an effect on getting more things to the tissues, so our immune system will increase its, uh, its capabilities. But because more fluid will travel out, more nutrients and oxygen goes out of the cells, more carbon dioxide and waste product can come back in, the cells are going to have less burden upon them and overall, this creates a benefit to anti-aging. It's an anti-aging supplement. Furthermore, we know that NO has a direct anti-infective activity. White blood cells, T cells, particularly the helper CD4 cells, carry nitrous oxide and actually puff it into or at uh, bacteria by surrounding viral coats, parasites, yeasts. The nitrous oxide creates a toxic environment and therefore it is a direct anti-infective agent. We know that it can kill cancer cells. Studies have been done and if there was a method that we could create of putting nitrous oxide, sorry, nitric oxide around the cells, we'd probably have a, a successful uh, anti-cancer therapy. Because the arteries are more flexible, more blood can go through, there is a benefit to those who have erectile dysfunction. The NO also acts on cyclic AMP, and that's 
the part that closes up the veins of the penis and others, other areas. So the, the, the NO and the arginine has a double effect in helping a very problematical issue that so many gentlemen will struggle with. Furthermore, we know that arginine through NO can influence the hyperacidity in the stomach and therefore help reduce one of the biggest problems that most of us face in practice, which is gourd, gastroesophageal reflux disease, but also gastritis and potentially ulcers. Furthermore, arginine seems to have a benefit of reducing uh, LDL and raising HDL. And combining that with its effects on the pituitary gland of making, making antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin and also stimulating growth hormone, extremely important as I said earlier for children, uh, we've got a remarkable uh, amino acid uh, and, uh, and its function. So from what I've explained, we can see that arginine is potentially a very successful therapeutic medicine, a medication in effect. And although we're not meant to be talking like that about natural compounds, food be thy medicine, for example, arginine has actually been studied to be considered as a, uh, as a drug, as a medicine, um, when given at supraphysiological doses. Like any drug, like any compound really whatsoever, like any practice of any sort, there are risks and side effects. And it is extremely important to understand those that come with arginine, particularly if more study uh, as you go forward and consider its use comes into play in, as part of your practice. Because of its association with blood vessel dilation, you have to be very careful with conditions associated with that. Whilst it can be very useful at the early onset of, say, an infection where you want more white blood cells to get out into the tissues, what you don't want is too much arginine that might create more of a flooding into tissues because of fluid leaving the blood vessels and going in. We've got to be careful, therefore, with, of, of things like migraines, which is often to do with blood vessel dilation, septic shock, people who are particularly ill with, with an infection who may therefore already be having a certain amount of uh, dilation, and, of course, with strokes. Although strokes are generally due to clogging of an artery, 10% are actually due to a bursting of an artery. You don't want that sort of artery to expand. But when we do clog an artery in a stroke, other blood vessels will try and uh, repair the, uh, uh, the damaged area. So you don't want that to happen too quickly either. You'll flood, flood the brain. So strokes, uh, so, or anybody who is at high risk of a stroke, uh, needs to be wary of using arginine and being, having it prescribed. Because of its immune uh, effects, you don't really want to be uh, providing high-dose arginine to those who will have uh, a very active immune system. So those with autoimmune issues, you need to be careful about. Something along the lines of a thyroid autoimmunity, which can lay at a fairly low level for a long chronic period of time, probably okay to use, but make sure that you're checking the, uh, uh, the autoimmune um, uh, markers. But other conditions uh, need to be a little bit, you need to be a little bit more wary about. Arthritis, lupus, be wary. I don't think that it's wise to give um, arginine to people with HIV and we do know and it's quite common knowledge amongst nutritionists that we shouldn't give it to those who have recurrent or even um, occasional perhaps herpes infections if those occasional bouts are aggressive so cold sores gentle herpes it appears that arginine will be used by the virus to create a better protective coat we counteract arginine because of the similarity in shape of lysine by giving lysine to those with herpes to try and stop the arginine getting into that defensive coat. There are other conditions, and you'll read about these, I'm sure. Cirrhosis, renal failure, probably not a good idea. Prolonged and chronic depression also may be a slight risk. We're now beginning to see that depression is quite often an inflammatory disease. So for those who don't seem to have a, a recognisable reason, a reactive depression, always be suspicious that there is some underlying condition 
and that underlying condition may be inflammatory. But for such cases, it's worthwhile trying a small amount if, if there's a reason for trying arginine for another purpose and keeping an eye and telling the patient to get in touch if they feel that they're getting a little bit more edgy, more depressed or more anxious. These things are generally reversible, of course. Arginine is not going to stay around in the body very long. It's going to be converted to nitric oxide for a start, but it's also going to be broken down. Arginine is not hard to find in our diet. It's predominantly high in poultry, turkey, chicken, wild game, uh, beef and pork and dairy, which isn't great for vegetarians. And we should be focusing more, of course, on vegetarianism as much as we can, or at least keeping our meat uh, intake down to a minimum, I think. But vegetables provide us with arginine very comfortably. Chickpeas and other lentils, pumpkin and sesame seeds, squash is quite high, uh, nuts including peanuts which aren't a true nut but they all have good levels of arginine. So does whole wheat and so does spirulina and seaweed. Um, the whole wheat is an interesting one because people who have herpes, uh, if they're having an outbreak, are probably best not having um, whole wheat. You need to sort of push them if they are going to have bread of any sort to the unhealthy stuff until the, uh, uh, until the lesion uh, settles and disappears. The amount that we generally eat, if we are an intermediate meat eater, is probably around four to six grams per day, or the day that we would eat the meat. Without it, we're probably getting under four grams. It's quite hard to eat a lot of lentils to keep up an arginine uh, supply. So I generally recommend that most people will benefit from a, a, a supplemental intake. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you can, and if you think the per, your patient should, or if you are an individual looking at this for the benefit of how best to take arginine, I think aiming at around six grams in a, in a day, based to a degree upon your diet, is not a bad idea. You need to start, if you're going to take supplemental arginine, on a lower dose, simply because it's got an effect uh, that can be quite effective. So if you take too much too quickly, you might find both your tummy and your arteries uh, behaving. You may start to feel a little bit uh, tummy rumbly. You might get some flushes if you start at a high dose swiftly. But building up to six grams a day, bearing in mind what you've been eating, and bearing in mind you'll have looked and seen how much you might have uh, in a hundred grams of pork or a hundred grams of lentils, you can govern what your best uh, levels are. Definitely split it through the day though. Don't take too high a dose in one go. And I think that is probably a summation of arginine that I hope will get you using arginine as a staple basic sort of uh, supplement alongside the, the other basics of probiotics, multivitamins generally, vitamin D through the winter etc. I hope you found that of help. Don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you.